Hi from the McKees. We miss you all. And we hope to see you all real soon. Hi everybody. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're all staying safe. We miss you. Good morning and welcome to our online services from the Southeastern Church of Christ. If you're not familiar with us, we're a family devoted to loving God, loving people, and making a difference in the world. We are grateful that you decided to join us today in our online worship service. If you uh, have never visited us before and you've enjoyed uh, seeing our videos online, once we're able to actually meet again, we would certainly like for you to come and pay us a visit in person sometime. Feel free to come by and uh, be blessed by our time of worship to God. We want to send out a reminder to everybody that uh, Carolyn Jackson is uh, hosting Kids Praise videos that can be found on our YouTube channel. If you have children, please feel free to take advantage of that. And to all you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Things are a little different right now. Uh, times, are, times are a little tougher. But uh, we have a special video that we hope will uh, bless you right now at this time. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. <sighs> Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back, Mommy, where are you going? sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to Daddy. Mommy! Where are you? But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... Uh... To all you mothers out there, whether you've, uh, whether you, uh, you biologically had children, whether you've adopted children, maybe you're a mother-in-law, or maybe you've actually been somebody's spiritual mother in some sense. I've had, I've had a couple of those in my life. We want to say Happy Mother's Day to you. Psalm 145 verse 1 says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Let's keep that in mind as we begin our worship to God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Yes, he is. 
throne. We will exalt you on high forever, King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We will have no other gods before you, our maker, creator. Good morning. Today we'll be reading Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud crashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let saints proclaim the power and might of his great name. Let us exalt on bended knee. Praise God the Holy Trinity. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Save my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise to the King, his throne transcends, his crown and kingdom never end. Now and throughout eternity. I'll praise the one who died for me. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom Sing that again, church. Praise God, praise God, praise God, who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. 
His flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Good morning, brothers and sisters. This Mother's Day, it may feel and look different than past years. Mother's Day means different things to different people. For many of us, it was taking our mothers out to eat after church. It will mean a very long wait, followed by a great meal with great people we love. For some of us, it might mean grilling out with a great meal with great people we love. For even some of us, it may mean a celebration of life. For a mother, we have lost having a great meal with great people we love. At the end of time, we're going to all join Jesus for a great meal with great people we love. This meal we're about to share this morning, it's anticipating the bigger, better meal that's yet to come. We take this meal to remember the past, what Jesus did for us so, so long ago, and to look to the future when we will eat with Jesus. But as we have learned from past Mother's Days, these meals aren't really about the food, they're about the people. And at the end of time, we'll be eating a meal with the very same people that we're eating with today. You see, this meal shows us who will be there, us. These are the people with whom we'll spend eternity in a better place, with better bodies, eating better food. It'll be with the same people. And so as we eat and drink, discern the body, the body of Christ, the people in the room with whom we'll live forever. If you've ever wondered why Jesus says it's so important to love each other, now you know. It's because we're going to be living and eating together with Jesus for a very long time. And the best meals are with people whom we love. Scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, starting with verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we pray? Dear Father, what a privilege to be able to come before you and partake of the bread and wine in remembrance of your sacrifice on the cross, that huge price for our sins, that we may be forgiven for all our faults and given us eternal life with those we love. As we take this bread and cup, may we never forget the enormous price that was paid on our behalf. May we live for him from this day on, knowing that his body, was broken, and his blood was spilt for us. Amen. Many blessings to you, and happy Mother's Day. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the
Southeastern. We're glad you're with us virtually. We're working on getting us back together physically. We want you to know that that's going to be based on a set of criteria that involve how can we best live out our mission to love God, love people, and make a difference in the world. Secondly, it's going to have as a key factor the concern for the health and safety of all our brothers and sisters balanced with our need to be physically present with each other. And then third, we're going to do it based on what is best for those that are most vulnerable and most needy. Our children, our older age people, and those who are in communities that desperately need to be around other people, but may be physically most vulnerable. So as we balance all those, please keep the leadership team that's working on this in your prayers, and we'll keep you informed. On this Mother's Day morning, we want to focus on two women of faith. Eunice, who is Timothy's mother, and Lois, who is Timothy's grandmother. And the story begins, at least from our point of view, with these two women taking Timothy to the synagogue and learning that a student of the famous Gamaliel, a man by the name of Paul from the city of Tarsus, was there in the synagogue that morning and he was giving a word of encouragement from the Psalms and the Torah. And as they listened to Paul preach, they noticed that Paul was pointing to the Mashiach, the Messiah of the Jews, the one that God had promised. And his name was Jesus of Nazareth. And Paul carefully showed how this man fulfilled all of God's prophecies for the Messiah. As they listened, Timothy was struck with the message, and for him, it put together all the many things his mother and grandmother had taught him from the scriptures growing up. It was wonderful. For them, it was exciting to see their young man so alive with passion. But when Timothy said, they're baptizing people into Jesus Christ, the Messiah, let's be baptized. They were hesitant at first. In their world, only proselytes were baptized. They were Jewish people. They didn't need baptism. But then they begin to discuss, Timothy's father is a Gentile. Don't you remember mom? Eunice said to her mother, Lois, that broke your heart when I married a Greek. And don't you remember when my husband wouldn't let Timothy be circumcised? He wasn't going to let his boy have the sign of Abraham in him. This is a good thing. And then Timothy helped them remember something Paul had said. That this baptism was a way for their faith to be realized. That as they confessed Christ as Lord and Messiah, Son of God, they were baptized. And they were baptized into Christ. He even pointed to Paul's exact words. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And now there is neither Jew nor Gentile, male or female, slave or free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And Timothy said, wouldn't that be good to unify our family where there's not a, a difference between Jew and Gentile and male and female? that we're one in Christ, and Christ is the garment we wear as our covering of grace. And so they joined him in baptism. Things were going along great until Paul's welcome wore thin. And the people in Lystra, their hometown, grew tired of him. But even worse, a group of people from Antioch of Pisidia came along with some people from Iconium and stirred up a, a riot and they took Paul out and they stoned him and left him for dead on the edge of town. All the believers gathered around him. I have to believe that Lois, Eunice, and Timothy were there and they prayed over him and suddenly he roused and he walked back into the city and then left. But several months later, he returned to the city and he encouraged them to remain faithful to Jesus and he helped them set up elders in each city for the churches 
and then he left to head back to Antioch in Syria, in Jerusalem, to report on his journeys. While he was gone, they prayed for him. They knew that whoever and wherever Paul went, there would be trouble. And so they prayed for his safety. But little did they know that when he returned, he would look at them and say, I'm leaving here and going off on my missionary journeys. And all the brothers and sisters in this region tell me how precious, how faithful, how good your son and grandson is. I want to take Timothy with me. Wow. It was an honor for sure. But it was an honor that came with great danger and risk. But this is what they had raised him to become. A man of faith, a man who honored God, the one who lived for Yahweh, the Lord Adonai, the God of Israel, the God of the promise who had sent his Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. But you know when they said goodbye to Timothy, it had to be with a lump in their throat and fear in their heart. They knew anyone that ran around with Paul was going to face all sorts of troubles and persecution and probably prison and maybe even death. But they sent Timothy off to go do what God had called them to do. They were women of faith and they had shaped Timothy's life. Timothy proved to be incredibly valuable to Paul. He told churches how precious Timothy was to him as his son in the faith. He said, I have no one like him. Everybody else worries about their own needs, but Timothy thinks about the welfare of others. To the Corinthians, the mess of the church that was there, he said, I'm sending Timothy to you, my son in the faith, and he will show you all the things that matter to me because he knows who I am and what I believe. Timothy was invaluable to Paul, and he was with Paul all the way to the end of Paul's life. But as Paul's life grew toward its end, he reminded Timothy that he needed to rev up his passion for his ministry, that he needed to be a man of faith and courage. Why? Well, the people of God needed him to be that. But even more, he said, remember, Timothy, remember what your mom and your grandmom taught you? From infancy, you knew the scriptures. You saw their life. You knew what they believed. And they have given you the faith you need to be who God wants you to be. I don't know if all the details in telling that the story of Timothy and Lois and Eunice are exactly historically correct. But if you look at the scriptures that you've seen on the screen, you know it's pretty close. So the question for you and me, as we look at honoring women of faith today, is how exactly did they prepare Timothy to be what God wanted him to be and help him become that? And I like to put things in, in three stages because they're easy to remember. So for me, the, the three stages of their passing on faith as women of faith was pretty simple. They shared with Timothy their life and their teaching about the scripture. The teaching and the scripture lined up. Their example modeled what they taught. Second, when it came time, they turned Timothy loose to go do what God had made him to do. And they did it even though there was great risk involved. And three, because of their consistent life of faith, as Timothy grew older and faced challenges, those that meant something in Timothy's life could say, Timothy, you need to step it up a notch because remember the faith of your mother, Eunice, and your grandmother, Lois. You need to live up to their standards, their courage, and their faithfulness. Now, I know we're not used to talking about women heroes, except maybe on Mother's Day. I'm a preacher. My wife helped me realize that I was guilty of using sports illustrations too much 
and also talking about only male heroes. So as I got to working on this message and I wanted to honor women of faith today, I realized we needed to awaken our ideas of who some of these women of faith could be. And so I said, okay, Phil, take three minutes, write down the names of women of faith that are heroes in, in the Bible. See if you can do that. And in less than three minutes, I came up with a Jewish dozen, 14, two groups of seven, the perfect number in the Jewish mindset. And I think you'll recognize some of these incredible women of faith. Let's begin with Miriam. Miriam was the sister of Moses. She's the one that watched over him as he was hidden in the bulrushes. She was the one that made sure that he was safely in the palace of Pharaoh with Pharaoh's daughter. She was also the woman that was his partner along with Aaron as they went into the wilderness and led the Israelites. She was the first worship leader that I know by name in the Bible because she sang the song of Moses' triumph and how God opened the seas and drowned the horsemen and the charioteers so that the Israelites were delivered. And then after Miriam, I thought of Rahab. Rahab, who we call the harlot. I think that's a horrible name. Rahab, the faithful. She wanted her family to be safe. She risked her life so that they could be given a place in the people of Israel so that the God of Israel could give them a new start. So she hid the spies at the risk of her life. and She became a part of the people of God so much a part of the people of God. She was in the lineage of David and of the Messiah Jesus. And not only that, she was also the mother-in-law of Ruth, another Gentile that was brought into the family of God, a Moabite woman who loved her mother-in-law so much. She gave us the beautiful words, entreat me not to leave you or from following after you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. She became the grandmother of King David. And then there's Deborah. You remember Deborah? Deborah was uh, a woman that was a wife. She was a judge. She was a prophet. And on top of all that, when the men were scared to go into the battle, she helped lead the charge and became a warrior. And then there's Jehosheba. You probably don't know Jehosheba, but she was the wife of the high priest, and she snuck into the palace, took a nurse and the baby Joash, and hid him in the temple. Meanwhile, the evil queen mother killed all the other rightful descendants of David that could be on the throne. She was trying to cut off the royal line. But Jehoshaphat saved Joash. And in saving Joash, she saved the promise of God to always have a descendant of David on the throne and one that was the father of the generations that led to the Messiah. Uh, after Jehoshaphat, I think of Esther, Hadassah, the one that saved the people of Israel. And then there was Elizabeth, oh, precious Elizabeth, that was a mother of John the Baptist who prophesied about the nature of Jesus' ministry to Mary to affirm to her that the Holy Spirit conception of the child in her was true. And then there's Mary, the mother of Jesus, who had a, as a young teenager uh, was pregnant by miracle. And as she accepted God's will for her, she said these beautiful things in poetic form that reflect the prophets. And what's interesting is the themes of those songs of Mary become the themes of Jesus' life and teaching. In Jesus' ministry, we think of Martha and Mary, their love for Jesus, their love for Lazarus, their faith that Jesus could do uh, anything to have prevented Lazarus' death. And even now, after his death, they thought he might could do something and saw Jesus raise him back to life. And then there's, there's Mary, John Mark's mother. John Mark that wrote the Gospel of Mark. John Mark that was the one that saw some of the ministry of Jesus and 
ministered with Barnabas and ministered with Paul. John Mark's mother was the one that had the upper room who provided a place for the apostles and Jesus to have the Last Supper, who provided a place for the apostles to hide until Pentecost, who provided the early church a place to meet. And then there are people like Lydia, Acts 16, the seller of purple, in the city of Philippi, who was by the river at the time of prayer. And she and her whole household heard about Jesus and became Christians when Paul came and preached the gospel to them. On top of this group, we know of others, other women that were powerful in faith, Yodia and Syntyche, women of faith that shared the gospel in Philippi, the same place that Lydia lived. And then there's Phoebe, who was a servant, a deacon in the church in Sincrea. And Paul sent her with the letter that we call the book of Romans to the churches of Rome. She may have even read the letter in the assemblies. She for certain explained some of the letter and the meanings of Paul to the people there. And then there's the four daughters of Philip, who when Paul on his last trip to Jerusalem came with with church leaders from all over Macedonia, Achaia, and Greece, stopped at the house of Philip. And the four daughters prophesied about what was to come. Now, why do I share that? Because women of faith come in all shapes, sizes, and ages. They have all sorts of interest and abilities. And on a day like today, a day when we remember Lois and Eunice, and these other 14 women of faith, and I'm sure if you take some time, you can come up with even more that are easily remembered. We want to recognize that group so that we'll see the great women of faith among us. Proverbs 31 ends with a statement. Charm is deceptive and beauty is vain, but a woman who honors, reverences the Lord is to pre be praised. Give her the honor she deserves in the city gate. And all her children and her husband will rise up and call her blessed. This morning, we want to thank you for being women of faith. We want to call you to keep investing in people that can make a difference in the kingdom. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we know God will use you to help his people be more than they were yesterday. Thank you. We honor you as our heroes of faith. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than clothes in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my Happy moments roll When Jesus shows His smiling face There is sunshine in my soul There is music in my soul today A carol to my King And Jesus listening can hear The songs I cannot sing Peaceful, happy moments roll When Jesus shows His smiling face There is sunshine in my soul There is gladness in my soul today And hope and praise and love For blessings which He gives me now For joys laid up
Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. Love you all and hope to see you soon. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. You're a superstar. You. you are a superstar. I love you, Mom. Thanks for everything you do. One of the great things about my mom is that she always makes me a lemon cake for my birthday. I'll be 50 this year. That's a lot of lemon cakes. Thanks, Mom. I love you. One reason why I love my mom is because she makes the best food, like, ever. And it's just so good, so. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. You're great because, well, you already know that. <laughs> hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day. And I wanted to say thank you for everything that you've ever done for me and for our family. And um, it really means a lot that you're always there for me to take care of me and um, put aside all the things that you have going on in your life, whether it be work or just the general stresses of life, and uh, try to take care of me. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello. I just want to say hi to my mother. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Great Grandma. I want to wish a very happy Mother's Day to my very exceptional mother and my love to all of you for whom this might be a hard day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you all and hope to see you soon. Well, my brothers and sisters at Southeastern, I know it's been a crazy week with uh, some emergency appendectomies and other things going on in the life of the church. And some of you are having real challenges physically. A lot of you are missing each other, and I want you to know I miss you. Joey asked me to do a closing blessing, and this is the one that really spoke most uh, perfectly for where my heart is towards you. It comes from the last uh, verse or two of First Corinthians. Our Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go in peace, and until we meet again, God bless.